everybody. I finally made it to the Golden Gate Bridge. Boy, does it feel good to be here. The bridge is so beautiful and looks so strong and graceful. It's a joy to just watch it because the sight of it makes me know that I really am here in San Francisco. My first glimpse of the Golden Gate Bridge was in the bus as we drove north. The distant tower tops are visible over the trees of Golden Gate Park and the Presidio. A beacon of excitement. We drive through the Presidio and come out onto the main entrance of the bridge. There is no toll going north, so we don't stop, but just flow out onto the bridge roadway. It happens so fast, there's so much to look at. The big cables draw my attention upward to the tower. It feels awesome, breathtaking. The steel towers are muscular and powerful in their design. As we approach midspan, the orange cables sweep down and almost touch the bridge. Gracefully, they climb back up to the North Tower. My heart feels happy. I look again to see the steel ropes, cables, and tower that hold the roadway. The vertical suspender rope seems so constant and secure. There's too much to see and find out about on one drive across. I decide to stay a while at the bridge and explore it. The Golden Gate Bridge looks great from every angle. Its symmetry and setting make it a stunning example of good planning, bold engineering, and proof that humans can create structures that enhance the natural beauty of Earth's special places. The bridge is 90 feet wide, the roadway is 62 feet wide, and there are wide sidewalks. The length of the midspan is 4,200 feet. The total length of the bridge, including the two suspended approaches, is 6,450 feet. The towers are 746 feet tall. Cables, which stretch from anchorage to anchorage, are three feet in diameter, and each is 7,650 feet long. Each anchorage contains 182,000 cubic yards of cement. The suspender ropes that hold the bridge deck to the cables are placed 50 feet apart and hold the bridge deck 200 feet above the water. The bridge has swayed as much as eight feet to one side. It's built to sway as much as 25 feet to either side. Seen from the hills of Berkeley, east of San Francisco, one can understand why the Golden Gate Bridge was built. The Golden Gate Bridge closes the narrow gap between San Francisco in the south and Marin County in the north. From this vantage point, the Golden Gate Bridge looks like the keystone in the growth and development of the San Francisco Bay Area. There was a lot of controversy about building the Golden Gate Bridge back in the 1920s when it was being planned. The over one mile gap was thought to be too wide for a bridge, especially because of the tidal flow in the waters, the high winds off the Pacific, and the danger of earthquakes. But the people who thought it couldn't be built were wrong. It was built and much of the credit goes to Joseph Strauss, whose statue stands next to the bridge. Strauss brought together talented designers and engineers. Joseph Strauss already had built two bridges in the China Basin area of San Francisco. They are working drawbridges with huge cement counterweights. Strauss had gained a lot of experience with the mechanics of movement in bridge design. He was a visionary engineer whose graduate thesis proposed a bridge connecting Alaska to Asia. Instead, he built the Golden Gate Bridge, linking the hearts of the world to the promise of the American West. The biggest task facing Strauss and the bridge builders was to build the South Pier and Fender Foundation on which the tower would stand. It had to be built in deep tidal waters, which rushed by at seven knots. A 35-foot deep hole was blasted into the rock, and 100-foot deep borings were made into the serpentine rock 65 feet below the water surface. After two years of work, a gigantic foundation with a protective fender was built to secure the base of the tower. While this work proceeded, the steel for the North Tower was delivered from Pennsylvania and erected on the Marin County shoreline pier. When the two towers were in place, they were the tallest human-made structures west of New York City. Then the task of spinning the thickest cables in the world began over 80,000 miles of wire, enough to encircle the equator three times, were spun and squeezed tightly together, as seen in the cross-section displayed at the Bridges Visitor Center.
The center span was erected in sections, lifted by cranes, and put in place. Strauss insisted on a safety net that stretched the length of the bridge, and it saved the lives of the 19 men who fell into it. It took four years of construction, and it was finished in late May 1937. When the bridge opened, everyone knew a marvel had been born, and a great celebration was held. Carney Campion is the general manager of the Golden Gate Bridge. He has a great deal of respect for the bridge and all the people who made it possible. Being general manager is, uh, is a tremendous responsibility, but it's probably one of the most exciting, delightful positions uh, uh, in public life in, in this country. Um, we have the, uh, the stewardship, certainly, of, uh, of the most famous bridge, I believe, in the world. Uh, in addition to that, because of the uniqueness of our corridor, we're into the bus and the ferry business with four ferry boats and about 275 buses. Uh, you have visitors and guests from all over the world that come to visit and see the bridge. Uh, we have people uh, in the six counties that, uh, what we might say, own the bridge, that are fiercely proud of the bridge and what it represents. Uh, certainly, it's a, uh, a, a monument to the, uh, uh, to the people that had the foresight to go forward and build what I consider to be one of the most unique public works projects ever built in the United States. Uh, many people lose sight that the Oakland-San Francisco Bridge, Oakland-San Francisco Bay Bridge, uh, uh, was under construction and built during the same period, literally, of the Golden Gate Bridge. And the state and federal funding went into the Bay Bridge, and the people that were supporting the construction of the Golden Gate were told they were sorry there'd be no state or federal participation. Uh, this did not deter in any way the people, and they did something that I doubt very few of us today would do, and that is the legislature created a district. Uh, the people then went to the polls, and they voted their homes and their businesses and their farms and their vineyards as collateral and guarantee against their property taxes to assure the repayment of the $35 million bond issue to pay for the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, it was an incredible exercise, and I say again, I doubt few people today would put their homes up as a guarantee for a project uh, that was, uh, by many people, thought was going to fall in the, fall in the bay anyway. Um, there was never any tax money required. Uh, the tolls paid for the bridge. It was paid for full and clear June 30th, 1971. Uh, about $35 million in the bond issue, about $38 million in interest was repaid. And uh, it's, it's a very unique district to and including this day in that it operates without any property or sales tax from the six counties uh, which operate and maintain the bridge and run the transit in, in, in the corridor. Uh, it still maintains uh, the same pride and prestige, I believe, uh, locally as well as throughout the world. And it's, um, it's, it's just a great structure. Uh, it's a great organization to be a part of with 900 employees and what I believe to be some of the most talented public servants anywhere in America. Uh, we have that blessing of having him on our staff. The Golden Gate Bridge seems like it stands quite still. I'm surprised to learn how much it moves. Suspension bridges are mechanisms that move. Flexibilities are inherent in their structure. Daniel Moan, chief engineer of the bridge, explains how a suspension bridge works. Well, suspension bridges are wonderful works of engineering. And for this setting here at the Golden Gate, this bridge is just a marvelous work of art. What makes suspension bridges so fitting for this location is the ability for a suspension bridge to span the distance of almost one mile of open water. And this suspension bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge, is particularly massive in its components. The major components of a suspension bridge are the anchorages, the main cable, the towers, the piers on which the towers are founded. This set of suspender ropes is the longest set on the bridge, about 980 feet long. It starts at the stiffening truss up to the main cable, loops over to the main cable and back down to the stiffening truss. And this supports the weight of the roadway, transmits the weight of the roadway out here up to the top of the, up to the main cable where it's, the load is then picked up by the top of the towers. These main cables, while they do support the vertical load of the roadway, in doing that, they put a tremendous horizontal pull 
on, on the anchor blocks. And that's why the, the anchor blocks, these massive concrete structures that are on each end of the main cable are so large and anchored into the, the rock formation so that when the, the pull of the, the main cable, just due to the tension of the main cable, comes on them that they, they're there forever. They're, they're not about to, to move. And even during a severe wind and an earthquake all happening at the same time, those anchor blocks will be able to withstand all of those, those loads, the horizontal pull of the main cable. The Golden Gate Bridge is moving constantly. It, it moves when the traffic loads come on it, the main deck goes down a bit, the wind blows against it, it moves out a little bit. When the sun shines on the side of the tower, this tower is warmer than the one on the other side. And as, as this one warms up and the other one cools off, this one gets longer, the other one gets shorter, so the towers lean and bend over in the afternoon towards the east. In the morning when the sun comes up, warms that side, this side will still be cold, it'll bend back to the west a little bit, so it's constantly moving. Even though the bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge, was designed in the late 20s and early 30s, it would still be even, still be difficult to overload the bridge, even by today's standards. And I think that this person right here, Clifford Payne, had an awful lot to do with that. Clifford Payne was a, a, a deep thinker, a very conservative person, and was one of my favorite people, too. When he put his pants on in the morning, he always used both a belt and a suspenders to hold his pants up because he never trusted one or the other to do the job completely. And I think when he selected the design parameters of the Golden Gate Bridge, I think he did that in the same way. So there's tremendous reserve capacity. The bridge has both belt and suspenders to, to hold it up. And uh, with the uh, improvements that we've done on the structure over the years, uh, seismic strengthening that we've done to the approaches of the bridge, along with new suspender ropes in the uh, early 70s, and now the, the new deck. Uh, we've got a, a, a bridge that will last for perhaps another 100 years, and has, it has tremendous reserve capacity. It could be uh, like a lower roadway could be fitted on the bridge with no, no problem at all, at all stress-wise with the components of the structure. It just fit right in. Original concrete roadway of the Golden Gate Bridge lasted almost 50 years before it was replaced with an orthotropic steel plate deck that provided even a, a stronger bridge than we had originally. The orthotropic steel plate deck reduced the total load of the bridge by in excess of 11,500 tons, and yet it is sturdier, stiffer, and stronger than that original concrete deck was. Another person that contributed a lot to the, the, to the appearance of the Golden Gate Bridge as we see it today, as we've seen it for the last 50, 50 years, is this person right here, Irving Morrow, consultant architect to Joseph Strauss. Morrow was responsible for much of the art deco design we see on the Golden Gate Bridge. These arches around the the portals of the towers are Morrow's contribution. In addition to the international orange color, the color that sets the bridge apart from all other bridges in the world, it's a beautiful vermilion color. Over 100,000 vehicles cross the bridge every day. Residents and tourists stop by all the time, and some of them are regular visitors. I was fortunate to meet some of them. I used to live in Sausalito for about four years, and what was so exciting is that every day I used to get to drive into the city, and it was so exciting to be able to drive over this expanse of water and see the beautiful city and just to experience the air, and it's just so exciting. The bridge, there's nothing like the Golden Gate Bridge. It's just the most beautiful, I think it's the most beautiful bridge in the world, and I've traveled a lot. えっと、ここの金門橋を見るの楽しみにしてきました。というのも、えっと、景色 This is something I've wanted to do. I've never walked across the Golden Gate Bridge before, so this is the day for me. She's done it once before. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching the big ships come underneath and to watch all the activity on the ships. I like the fresh air, and it just feels healthy being out here. 
I just walked across the bridge and it was it was nice because you're so high up and above the water and the boats were pretty nice and the scenery is great. Walking across the Golden Gate Bridge is a ritual of the West. I even met Marianne Blankenship who walked across the Golden Gate during its opening celebrations. In 1937, when I was 12 years old, I walked across the Golden Gate Bridge on opening day. My family, aunts, uncles, cousins, must have been about 12 of us that all came. And it was a beautiful day. It was a day like today, as I remember. Of course, as a child of 12, you, it's, everything's beautiful. But it was a lovely day, and we picked picked on the bluffs here somewhere. I don't know where on the other side. And it was just a gorgeous day. And it, was a, it was something to remember. We all did together. The bridge gardeners and many others do a lot to make the tourists visit pleasant. The bridge site has a village atmosphere, and everyone is very friendly and kind, and keep a good humor under stress. Indeed, the thousands of people from across the USA who participated in the construction, and those who did the physical labor out in the wind, high above turbulent waters, and the people who built all the support facilities near the bridge, must have done their work with pride. Their love is alive here today in all of the people who work so hard to keep the Golden Gate Bridge open. Good afternoon, Golden Gate Bridge. There are many people who work on the bridge to operate it on a day-to-day -day basis. There is a sort of command center where bridge officers use television cameras that are stationed beneath the towers to watch the flow of traffic. Tow truck operators are on hand to clear stalled vehicles. Lane changers work day and night. All of these people serve to keep the traffic flowing. The bridge maintenance workers maintain nearly two miles of roadway, superstructure, and foundation supports. Tom Andrade has worked here 26 years and has been all over the bridge in all kinds of weather and has experience in all of the maintenance and operational activities. The Golden Gate Bridge is actually a piece of working machinery. And as the machines that uh, utilize it to get from Marin to San Francisco County and back, it must also be maintained. It's full of a thousand working parts, uh, pins, swivels, rocker beams, which all must be maintained along with the regular structure. The regular structure is maintained by the painters and the iron workers primarily. They are the backbone of the workforce that does the maintenance on the bridge. As any piece of machinery, it's constantly deteriorating and having to be upgraded and repaired. It's always being subjected to the elements. Consequently, the people who are working on it are constantly being subjected to the elements. It's usually wet, cold, foggy, the steel is constantly cold, the steel is constantly wet, and it's always hard. If you're going to work on the bridge, you have to be able to work with nature. It's cold out there, it's wet, it's windy, and you have to be able to stand it. Not stand it just for a few minutes or even an hour. You have to be able to stand it all day. You can't want to go inside all the time. It's just not that way. Under these conditions, Everybody has to work as a team. We have over 100 people out on the bridge every day. It always takes teamwork. You cannot work out here by yourself. That takes a lot of communication. That takes a lot of time together. Uh, Green P doesn't go out there and just fall right into the gang. If you could uh, really look at the bridge closely, there are several sets of fingerprints uh, out there on all parts of the bridge. The term leaving fingerprints is means gripping on so hard that you don't know whether you're going to be able to get your hand off again and you just have to force yourself for the next move. It's really a feeling of, I don't want to go any further. The safety of the maintenance personnel at the Golden Gate Bridge is one of the topmost concern of everybody that works here. It's crucial that we do net tests. This is accomplished by the iron workers. The net test is the safety nets that you see hanging underneath the scaffolds uh, that are on the bridge. Uh, this net test is simply taking 400 pounds of sand in bags, releasing it from roadway level down into the net to make sure that the nets will hold. Bridge roadway is suspended at each one of the towers 
by pivot points. These are uh, big pins with bearings on them, and it allows the bridge to be able to twist and move. These pins are under tremendous amount of pressure, and they are, have to be lubricated just like any bearing in a car. We have equipment, compressors, generators, chainsaws. We have enough equipment here to probably outfit a small town. One of the interesting things about the bridge is that you always have something pleasant to look at. You can see a sailboat tacked into the wind. Some days you can even see whales and sharks and many, many times seals just swimming around underneath the bridge going in and out. It's a uh, it's very interesting place to work. The supervisors of the iron workers and the painters are on the bridge and will go below the roadway to inspect conditions. The heartbeat of this bridge is best heard below the road deck. It's a thumbing, drumming traffic noise. John Camilleri explains where the center pins are that connect the bridge approach roads and the mid-span to the towers critical moving parts that keep the three segments of suspended roadway aligned. One of the many functions of the iron workers greasing the bridge is the center pin that we have here and a rocker post. They're constantly moving with the expansion and contraction, slipping in through the tower and back again. With the center pin being up in this area up here, it's very important that we keep these greased and keep them free of dirt because we, it's hard to replace any part of the bearing surfaces in this condition. At each tower, as the roadway passes through, you've got four rocker posts, which carry the weight of the road deck as it goes through the tower. These rocker posts need to be greased constantly to maintain the fluid motion of the bridge that we, it's always moving anyway. It's ever so slight at times, and uh, the magnitude increases with the strong and severity of the windstorms that we might have. Only high winds and rain stop the painting process on the bridge. Ross Salazar explains the painting procedure. All we do is sandblast all the rust off, all the de dead paint, down on bare metal. It's what we call white blast. Then we spray on a inorganic water-based zinc. We usually apply it about three mils thick, not more than six, and after that's applied on, that's what it looks like, that gray right there. Then we let it cure for about six months, put on a vinyl wash, spray with two coats of vinyl top coat, and that's the result of what it looks like after we get through international lowering. Under ideal conditions, it would probably last 30 to 40 years or more, but the kind of weather we get out here, wet, humid, cold, probably won't last that long. Quite frequently, we come across some rusty bolts bad rivets that are rusted all the way through and, and that's how we painters and uh, ironworks are always working close together. They come out and replace it and then we come back again and reblast it and spray it again and make sure that they're in good condition. The bridge is a piece of machinery that does the job. The thing that makes it so unique is its location and the style that it does its job in. It's the same way with the maintenance crews out here. They're all different types of people uh, doing all different types of things, but they work together, they work in their own way, they work in their own style, and around the world they're unique to themselves. They work at the Golden Gate Bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge is so unique that I find myself reflecting on the history of bridge design and building and find myself thinking about the meaning of a bridge. Bridges present the possibility of transcending obstacles, of linking with the opposite. They are a passage to something new. Bridges are a nature symbol, and it seems natural that the Golden Gate Bridge is building a sister bridge relationship with the Grand Sito Bridge in Japan. Baker Beach is a very restful viewing site. It's so nice to relax on the beach in the warm sun. 
I hadn't expected to find out so much. To discover that the Golden Gate Bridge is an outstanding piece of 20th century engineering art, or that it is a mechanism that moves all the time. It is never at rest. For me, I especially like that they call the color of the Golden Gate Bridge international orange, because to me, the Golden Gate Bridge is a symbol of international peace. It brings out the friendliness of people from all around the world who see it. And hard work is necessary to make it functional and beautiful. I'm so glad I came to visit the Golden Gate Bridge. I wish you were here. Goodbye for now.